Hello, I'm Charling, and this is Dragon Quest Heroes Slime Edition, developed by Koi Temco Games. So, what exactly is Dragon Quest Heroes? Well, it's an action RPG similar to the likes of Dynasty Warriors. The story revolves around a group of characters who, after a dark shockwave sweeps through their city and turns all the once peaceful and friendly cute monsters into a frenzied rage, basically try to find the source of the shockwave and return everything to normal. For those of you who are familiar with the other Dragon Quest titles, you'll recognize the majority of the heroes that are found in the game. For me though, this is the first game in the Dragon Quest series that I've played, so all of these heroes are pretty new to me. So the PC version is a port from the PS3 slash PS4 versions that was released in 2015, and unfortunately it shows. The models for the enemies are pretty simple. Um, but as I said, there are a massive amount of them on the screen at any given time, so I suppose that's understandable. The enemy design for the most part is decent, and some of them are quite interesting. Uh, the main characters obviously contain more detail than the enemy models, as you would expect. Unfortunately, there's not a great deal of detail in the environment, and because of that, some of the locations and settings appear somewhat bland and feel somewhat flat because of it with some of the textures being darn right bad, making the game look like it was a port from the PS3 version rather than the PS4 version. All of that said though, I don't think it's a massive issue. I mean, the art style of the game is colorful and playful for lack of a better description. And I think because of the overall aesthetic and art design of the game, the fact that the game looks a little bit dated doesn't detract too much from the overall experience in my opinion. So for the most part the game runs at 60 fps there are some situations where it gets busy and the frame rate will drop but i suppose for the majority of my time with the game the frame rate remains at 60. the drops were surprising though since i am running on sli 970s with an i7 unfortunately there doesn't seem to be proper sli support for this particular title so you might find that the performance is worse with sli enabled or that the scaling is not particularly great at all the audio in the game is fine as well, with the combat sounds as you'd expect them to sound. The voice acting is decent as well, it's not cringe-worthy, fortunately. And the game music is reminiscent of some of the older Japanese RPGs that I used to play on my old PlayStation. And you know, I have to say that it's always interesting to see the contrast to the Western games soundtracks which we play, which always have a more movie-like tone, versus a lot of the Japanese RPGs which have a more sort of playful soundtrack, if I can say that. So gameplay wise, there are a number of heroes that join you as you progress through the story of the game. All of them have different fighting styles and abilities and different weapons, which kind of add to the variety of gameplay in combat, which I thought was pretty cool. These heroes can all be leveled up, which give you access to new abilities, as well as increasing the strength of previous abilities and the overall survivability and performance. Now, new weapons and equipment like armor and stuff can be purchased. Items can be crafted with the loot you get from playing through the various stages in the game and of course as you progress through the story more stages unlock and these stages can be repeated if you need to grind for more xp money or crafting ingredients now the one thing i do wish was better was the menu navigation in the game it feels very cumbersome and kind of clunky and not really that intuitive for a pc especially if you're using the mouse and keyboard i think that this is a combination of the game being a japanese game and also being a port over from console I think that if you are familiar with either of the aforementioned things, you may not have as much of an issue as I did with the layout of the menus. But I do definitely think there was room for improvement. Now I've been playing the game with a controller. There is keyboard and mouse support. I haven't spent a lot of time using the keyboard and mouse because just everything is more intuitive with a controller. And I think that this port has been designed with the controller in mind since they haven't customized things specifically for PC as I've mentioned earlier. So the meat of the gameplay will be in the combat, as with any action RPG, you'll be tasked with defending a location, protecting a character, destroying portals through which endless waves of monsters will spawn. There are boss encounters as well, which are more interesting and also more challenging than your normal encounters. But the combat is fun, and it's engaging, but not particularly difficult unfortunately. You'll be smashing through large crowds of monsters as you play through each level, some of them will be flying, some of them will be ground. But unfortunately, most of them will just be fodder since they basically just make their way towards your objective without really attacking you that much. Of course, there are some special enemies in the game that are going to be harder to take down and actually require a little bit of thought. 
but for the most part, not so much thought is required. You'll also be able to customize your party from the heroes that you've unlocked so far on your base. And when you go into map, you'll actually be able to switch between the different different heroes in your party, which adds a little bit to the tactics and strategy that will be applied on each of the levels that you play. And as I mentioned, each of the heroes has different combos and spells, which add a little more to the game variety as well. And that basically sums up the gameplay loop you're going to find in Dragon Quest Heroes. Now, if you're coming from Dynasty Warriors or any other Musu type of games, I apologize if I've butchered that word, this will feel very familiar. It's the same game, but with a different coat of paint. And the question you're going to have to ask yourself is if you prefer the more playful theme that is presented here. Now, personally, I prefer the setting of Dynasty Warriors since I am a Chinese martial arts instructor, so that probably has something to do with it. But overall, I think that Dragon Quest Heroes Slime Edition is an enjoyable game. I don't think it's revolutionary, but I do think it's just worth checking out. However, for the $60 asking price, I think it's quite steep for what's on offer here. And if you enjoy this kind of gameplay, you're probably better off looking at Dynasty Warriors 8 Extreme Legends Complete Edition. Quite a mouthful. If you do want to pick up uh, Dragon Quest Heroes, I'd suggest you wait for a special. But other than that, that's been a look at Dragon Quest Heroes Slime Edition for PC. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them in the section below. Otherwise, I've been Shaoling. Until next time. So, what is Warframe? Well, it's a free-to-play third-person action game with shooting, melee combat, space combat, crafting, upgrades, leveling and looting. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the Trackmania series, it's basically a time-based arcade racing game. Now, I'm going to start off by saying this. If you're looking for a driving simulation, you're going to have to look somewhere else.